the person of Elder Javante Will and make him feel real good. Praise the Lord, everybody. That was real good for me, but can we give God praise? Come on, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the one who woke us up early this morning and started us on our way. We got blood running through our veins. We got eyes that can see, lips that can speak, ears that can hear. We walk without a crutch. We walk without a walker. We're in here. It's certainly, I count it a privilege. I still have you standing. Let us honor the set gifts of this house. Certainly, I honor my leaders in the person of Overseer Marvin e. McCoy. And to the prophet of the house, Pastor Vita McCoy. Our associate pastor, Elder Gregory Cutler. And our church mother, Missionary Phelps. Certainly, I count it a privilege anytime that I'm able to stand behind the pulpit because there could have been a time that I could have been rolled in front of it. Oh, y'all, I missed that. I could have been lying right here in front of the pulpit, but I'm able to speak behind it. So certainly I give God praise. To my friends that came, thought in that robbery to join us on this morning, Minister Kevin, I honor you, bro. To my God sister and her crew. She almost stole the road. Look at that. I'm going to have to buy you lunch. I love you, God sister. Okay, let's go to the word. I'm ready to preach. The word will be coming from Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 33. I don't hear no papers turning, so I am guess you're scrolling. I hope you're scrolling on the Bible. It's not the time to be on the gram and on Facebook. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 14, starting at the 22nd verse. It reads, immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples, oh, I'm sorry, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake while he sent the people home. After sending them home, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell where he was there alone. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land, for a strong wind had risen and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them, walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage. I am here. Then Peter, then Peter, then Peter, then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you, walking on the water. Verse 29, yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. But when he saw the strong winds and waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? When they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. Then the disciples worshiped him. You are really the son of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. And we say thanks be unto God. Before you take a seat, I just want you to preach to your neighbor for a few moments and tell your neighbor, I had faith in the storm. That was the wrong neighbor. They didn't get excited on your preacher voice. Say, neighbor, I had faith in the storm. Father, we just thank you for this privilege, oh God, to be able to speak to your people, oh God. Sit me down and you rise up, oh God. Let them hear you, oh God. God, move by your power, move by your might, oh God. Let I have clarity of speech, oh God. Oh God, let it get to their hearts, oh God. Let them leave refreshed, oh God. Let them leave encouraged, oh God. Let them leave empowered, oh God. God, let them walk away with strength to fight another day. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You all may be have, have your seats. I had faith in the storm. Now, on this pay, past Thursday, we all had a visual of how life can go sometimes while we're on our journeys. Yeah, you remember on this past Thursday, Thursday, it started off real sunny. Clear blue skies, birds chirping, nice breeze. If you're privileged with a sunroof, you probably had it open. And everyone was outside doing outside activities. And then around about 3.30, 3.30 p.m., dark clouds started to form. Strong winds began to happen. Some people, if you got an iPhone, iPhone, I don't know if Joy let y'all know, but iPhones let you know when something's coming. But the iPhone let you know that something was coming. People began to rush to their cars and to their homes. A storm had come our way. 
For some, it caught many of us off guard. I know it did for me. I was on the route. Well, I was on my walking route. I was like, no, I got to go. So I hurried up on my good walking route. So I come to tell you, so it is in the natural. It's in the spirit, spiritual. It seems like the moment you had a completely great day, then here comes the storm. Storm cause delays. Storms make you uncomfortable. Storms cause damage. Storms are very inconvenient. But I want you to think about it. I want to think about your personal storm. That moment you received the check, then all of a sudden something want to break in your house. That moment you got hired on that good job, then all of a sudden a coworker want to come and try to make you lose your job. Okay, that wasn't for you. Maybe you got saved and all of a sudden your family members wanted to start acting crazy. Okay, maybe you, that wasn't your story. Maybe you decided to stop drinking. Now everyone wants to invite you out to happy hour. I'm talking about storms. And certainly that moment you decided to control your flesh. Then all of a sudden everybody want to hit you up in your DM. Those exes want to hit you up like, oh, I miss you. What you doing? Storms, I tell you, I have good news to tell you. Storms, will, I have news to tell you. Storm, even though storms will always happen, storms are just temporary. And in this atmosphere, you are either entering a storm, you're currently in a storm, or you're leaving a storm. But remember, storms are temporary. Now, on my good job that makes me able to pay my tithes, if you get a job, pay your tithes, saints. My good job as a mailman, we often have to walk, work in and through storms. Now, we can't control the storms. I certainly can't call out every time Channel 5 say, oh, it's a storm coming because I ain't got that much leave to keep using every time a storm come. So they tell us we have no choice but to face it. I'll never forget, I'll never forget, it was my first day, my first day being a postal worker, and it just decided, our training, the way the post office works, you have to shadow the first day. So that means you don't carry no mail, you just walk behind somebody else that got a route. So I was like, cool, I can do that, I don't gotta carry nothing, I don't gotta work, all I gotta do is walk and look at you, do what you do. I was like, okay. So I had, to I had to shadow my trainer on his route. And in the middle of the day, I noticed he began to put on his rain gear. Now, a big storm had came out of nowhere. So me being me, I sat in the truck. <laughs> I said, it's about to rain. You got your gear. I don't have nothing. My trainer had experience with handling storms. You'll catch it in a minute. My trainer said, come on. This is a part of the job. And I don't know who this is for. This is a part of the job that you will see it through. Our assigned task was to deliver no matter the condition. Life will bring you storms, but God is giving you ways to finish your assignment in spite of. So I come to tell you, I'm going to tell you about my story. That, that was day one. But day two, I'm telling you, I was prepared. Day two, now the way the post office works, day two, you get the carry mail now. But you split the route in half. So he go one way of the street, I go the other way. But this day, I had bought my rain gear for just in case purposes. That's meaning, that means that the, the last storm prepared me for the next storm. Oh, you better learn how to learn these lessons from your storms. Don't walk into the same ditch that you walked in before. But learn from your last storm. It was just preparing me for my next. Now, for years, I'm, I feel like I'm a pro. I'm a vet at working through storms. And David said, it was good to me to be afflicted so that I might learn your decrees. I know it sounds crazy, but it was good that I was uncomfortable. It was good that I suffered inconvenience. It was good that I had to feel unprepared. But now I can handle it. Now, let's get back to our text found in Matthew. Let's go to our text to see how a storm was handled. Immediately after Jesus had just fed 5,000 with five loaves of bread and two fish, I mean, just, he just did it. He told the disciples, y'all get back in the boat and cross over to the other side of the lake. And sent, he sent the people home. Why? He sent the people home. After the sending the people home, he went up to the hill to pray by himself. Night fell while he was there alone. Jesus went to pray alone. He made time to pray to the Father. I said he made time to pray to the Father. Wouldn't it be amazing if believers made time to pray? Not just when tragedy happens, but when things are going good, can you set aside time to talk to the Father? 
Sometimes you have to leave the crowd. Sometimes you have to turn off your social media. Sometimes you have to put your phone on do not disturb. Sometimes you have to turn off everything. If you got a car, go in the car, car and speak to the father. If you got kids running around, put a good show on YouTube for them and you go talk to God. But well, it's time for the believers to get back to speaking to God. If you speak to God, you'll be prepared for your next storm. And here at Judah, here at Judah, in case you didn't know, we have a prayer line. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6 a.m. Okay, you can't get up at 6. That's why we record the line. So you can pray whenever you wake up throughout the day. Okay, maybe you don't like calling it on phone lines. Okay, we have a monthly prayer gathering here at Judah. Every first Wednesday here at Judy, you know, just come and just experience the power of prayer. And just, the, she didn't tell me to do this, but certainly we have a prophetic prayer breakfast coming up. So go ahead and get a ticket. You know, it's only $49. Don't look at me strange because you know what you spent $49 for. There's a special Ziploc bag that you bought four of them. There go your 49 right there. But go ahead and buy that ticket. She didn't tell me to do this plug, but go ahead. To be able to learn about prayer. So that you can know what they're saying. So you will learn to pray besides when you have food in front of you. If you are grown, you should not be saying, now I lay me down to sleep. You should be able to intercede. Here at Judah, the model of prayer, we do the Acts model. That's adoration, that's confession, that's AC, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. So go ahead and do that. But learn how to pray. And not just when things are going bad. And pray for yourself. I believe in agreeing with somebody. Find you somebody to pray with you. You gossip enough, so why can't you pray with somebody? So let's get back to praying. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to go off that far. So Jesus was praying after a victory. And then the disciples were already en route and encountered a storm. The text said in verse 24, meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land for a strong wind had risen and they were fighting heavy waves. They were too far to go back to the shore. And I don't know who this is for. You are too far to go back. You left there for a reason. You were told to go in. Some of us was pulled and dragged out of it for a reason. Do not go back. Even after a victory and during the storm, your assignment should be pushing forward. Jesus came toward them walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified in their fear. They cried out, it's a ghost. They thought it was Casper out there. It amazed me because the disciples shows us their growth in storm management. AP Color, you are a Bible scholar. In Matthew chapter 8, we already see that the disciples had already encountered a storm in their Bible, in the Bible. And at that time, Jesus was on the boat, sleep while the storm was going on. But this time, they were afraid of the storm. And then they woke up, they woke him up, and he calmed the storm. Now, in our current story in Matthew 14, the text shows us that it wasn't the waves and the storm that brought them fear. It was what they saw coming while they were in the storm. They had to label it, label it something because they had never seen it before. And just like the disciples, you are experiencing something you never seen before but verse 27 shows us that Jesus spoke to them and said don't be afraid he said take courage I am here then our boy Peter said call to him Lord if it's really you tell me to come to you walking on the water Jesus said yes come so Peter went over the boat and over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus now here in Judah we believe in learning about faith teaching about faith exhibiting faith so Peter in this story showed us Faith in a storm. Just a few teaching on faith. Faith is the trust of someone or something without logical proof. Faith makes things visible that are invisible. Faith is their unquestioning belief. Faith is seeing before seeing. Faith comes to the mind that it, that faith proves to the mind that this is real, but when you can't see it. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You already have faith. Faith requires action because faith without works is dead. Having faith is intentional. Help me out, overseer. Yes, I'll help you out, son. Our belief is shaped because of our environment, our credible people, 
and repetitious information. Our faith is shaped because of those th three things. Now, these are two things. These aren't my, ma my main points, but Peter shows us two things when it comes to faith. He shows that faith will cause you to speak. While everyone else in the boat was saying it's a ghost, it was Peter who opened his mouth to the Lord. And he said, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Faith will have you speaking. Sometimes you are going to have to speak while everyone else is silent. Sometimes you are going to have to speak when no one else has a response. This is a world looking for an answer. You have the answer. Speak it through your faith. You will overcome. You will move mountains. You will reach higher heights. You will do the impossible. The moment you decide to speak. Speak it to the future right now and say, my future is blessed. And while you're speaking in the future, it's going to show up right now. Give God praise right there. Yes. Certainly, faith will have you speaking. And point number two, faith will cause you to step. Not only did Peter speak, but the Bible tells us that he went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. So many scholars and Bible scholars want to talk about he had lacking faith and all this, that he drowned and all that. I'm concerned about the fact that he walked on water. Faith will have you do the unthinkable, just like Peter. Now, Peter was already a fisherman, but he had never walked on water. By he being a, fish, a fisherman, this is just my thought. This is not Bible. This is just my thought. By him being a fisherman, he, I, I think that he would imagine himself walking on the water. So that gives me, a, this is not even my notes. Sometimes you have to imagine what you can do. Okay, maybe you're, walk, you're working under somebody, but maybe you need to decree that you will be the CEO of what you're working for. I'm sure Principal McCoy, Pastor Vita McCoy, I'm sure when she was a teacher, she saw herself in the principal's office. Now she gets to tell people what to do. You have to see yourself before it shows up. Faith will have you stepping out by yourself. My God, and that's the point that people don't like. Being alone is something we do not like to do. I understand there's some married folks in here, but even sometimes you got to keep it to yourself sometimes. Because faith will have your, your spouse saying, what are you doing? God gave me this. That's the only response you can tell them. Faith will have you doing the unthinkable. It will have you stepping out by yourself. Sometimes you can't even tell your friends. Joseph in the Bible couldn't even tell his brothers. Without them wanting to hate and do all the other type of things. But even Joseph came up on top. And that's the word for you on today. You're going to come up on top. While everyone... Even the ones that should be walking with you will sometimes remain in the boat. But tell your neighbor, I'm about to walk on water. In this text, the boat wasn't just a form of transportation. But in this case, it was also a limitation. Because nobody else got out of the boat. But Peter walked while others remained. What's keeping you from getting out of the boat? That thing that's uncomfortable, that thing that's keeping you from walking towards Jesus. You've been walking with him for a long time. What's keeping you from being all that he has called you to be? What's keeping you in the boat? I know you've been with your same friends for years, but history means nothing. If it's hindering you, if it's bringing you down, if you're repeating the same traps, if you're still crying at night over the same situations, keep your friends, keep, them, keep the friends, but limit what you say to them. Because that's a, you need to be uncomfortable if you're going to step out of this boat. And that's the thing that's keeping, that's the, that thing that's keeping you with everyone else. Peter's faith had him walking on what should have been killing him. Use your faith to step. I think I'll say it again. Peter was walking on what should have killed him. And some of you are walking on the very thing. That should have killed you. You had loved ones die when you wanted to get in the casting with them. But you walking with such a grace to see it through. Use your faith to step. Step into a higher position. 
Step into a job from being unemployed for a while. Step into an abundant life. Step into an elevation. Step into a debt-free life. Step into that decree. Step into getting your family saved. Step into a life full of joy. Step into a happy marriage. Step into a blessed ministry. Step into that new house. Step into that new building. Look at your neighbor and say, my neighbor, it's time to take a step. Your faith, your faith, your faith should have you speaking and stepping. I think I'm going to write a song. That sounds good, speaking and stepping. <laughs> Brother Jeff, I'll give you a cut. You know you're going to have to do the producing part. I'll look out for you, man. But your faith should have you speaking and step, stepping. When your storm comes, you can either be led by your fears or your beliefs. Just a definition of fear. Fear is that feeling that something undesirable is going to happen. The meaning of beliefs are those thoughts that are repeated until you say they are true. You have to believe that fear isn't an option. You have to believe 2 Timothy 1 and 7 where it says God has not given us the spirit of fear but of power, love, and a sound mind. Here at Judah, we love the word. You have to believe that Psalm 23 and 4. Though you will walk through the shadow, the valley of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil. You have to believe Isaiah 41 and 10 where it says fear not for the Lord is with you. Be not dismayed. You have to be led by the right beliefs. That's why it's important that you not take all your belief systems from Dr. Phil and Oprah and all that. Get in the word. Because faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So if you listen to them more than you in the word, you are going the wrong way. It's the right beliefs that we need. Now these are my three points. I'm going to give my three points. We're going to pray. We might dance a little bit. And y'all going to go home and cook and rest for this good weekend. Make sure you invite me. Hallelujah. <laughs> but three things to have when you are dealing with a storm. Woo! Point number one, you have to have confidence. Uh -huh. Confidence is the quality or state of being certain. Philippians 1 and 6 says, being confident of this very thing, yeah. that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Confidence will have you walking with your head held high. You know, you was confident when you went in that DM to try to get that girl, bro. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a lot of ladies in here. So let me say the ladies. Ladies, you were confident. You know, it used to be a time where the men would approach the women. Now the women are walking with so much confidence. They saying, that's my man. Use that same confidence in the word. Okay. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm not going to go down your street. I'm no nice preacher. <laughs> point number one was confidence point number two you have to have courage yeah. courage is that mental or moral strength to venture to preserve or withstand danger fear or difficulty uh -huh. Deuteronomy 31 and 6 reads be strong and of good courage fear not nor be afraid of them for the Lord thy God yeah. he, he it is that doth do go with thee do it, go with thee. He will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Courage will have you standing when you should be falling. Yeah. Hallelujah. And my last point, point number three, you have to have comfort. Comfort is to give strength and hope to or to have ease of the grief or the trouble of. Second Corinthians chapter number one, verses three through four reads, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in tr any trouble yes. with the comfort with we, which we ourselves are comforted by God. Yes. Comfort will give you the assurance that everything will be all right. And that's been your testimony this year in 2019. You didn't have nothing else but the assurance yes. that everything yes. will be all right. You might have had tears when you said it, but everything will be all right. Your bank account might have looked funny, but everything will be all right. Your family members might, might not be saved right now, but everything will be all right. So you have to have, point number one, confidence. You have to have courage. And you have to have comfort. You have faith 
in your storm. Everyone, please stand. We thank you, Jesus. I want to know what type of storm are you in that's causing you to think that you are going to fail? Are you being led by fear or by your faith? The end of the text, I didn't get to it because the message was about walking out, stepping out, and speaking. Too many times we worry too much about failing. We worry too much about if it don't work. I'm a living witness. I failed several times, but it hasn't taken me off my post. It hasn't gotten me out of my posture, and it kept me faithful to not only to this church, but to the one who gives me life every day. In Matthew 14, in the later verses, 30 through 33, when he saw the strong, when Peter saw the strong winds and the waves, he was terrified, and he began to sink. Man, that that. That raised a question. How do you begin to sink in an ocean? That means Jesus was already right there, and he made sure he grabbed them. The Bible said immediately Jesus reached out and grabbed them. And it was because Peter yelled out, save me, Lord. Who are you calling when you fall? The only thing, alcohol and weed, marijuana, whatever you want to consider it, the only thing, oh, sex, flesh, anything, the only thing that stuff can do is give you a temporary fix. So why aren't you calling on God who can give you a permanent fix? Jesus asked the question, why did you doubt me? You have so little faith. And when they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. And the disciples worship him and say, you are really the son of God. Peter began to sink because of fear during his faith move. This is the time to make more faith moves. Don't keep doing the same things that you have been doing. And just because your parents haven't done it, you can do it. If you need to get a degree, go and get the degree. But it's time to make faith moves. Peter focused on Jesus even when he got scared. He knew who to call. And I want to make sure that you know who to call. But I want you to encourage your neighbor for the last time and tell him, God won't let me drown. Hallelujah. God won't let me drown. And here's the thing. Some falls have to be seen so that the people will know who brought you out. So we're going to pray. I'm going to pray a special blessing over everyone here that our faith be increased. Because you have already had faith. You just have to use it. So I just want to encourage your hearts. Bow your head. Grab your neighbor's hand. And even while you're holding your neighbor's hand, I want you to pray for your neighbor because we are strengthened by our brothers and sisters. There's so many people thinking that staying at home you can gain the same thing, but it's something about touching another survivor. Someone that should have drowned. Someone that shouldn't have made it. But you're able to touch the hand of somebody else that might be going through something harder than you. But they have the strength to endure it. So, kind Father, we thank you because you are so good. You are everything that we need you to be, God. God, those in this atmosphere need to hear from you, oh God. They need your strength, oh God. They need to hear your voice, oh God. They need just another push, oh God, to be able to step out the boat, oh God. For some of us, oh God, the storm is forcing us to step out of the boat. So we have our faith that has us walking through a storm, oh God. What should have killed us, oh God, we are walking through it. What should have brought us lack, oh God, it's given us strength. Oh God, so we praise your name, oh God, because you are good. 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 And God, we are walking with confidence. We are walking with courage. We are walking with your comfort, oh God, that lets us know that everything will be all right. Father, we give you praise because you're going to make us through. God, we're going to use our faith to do the impossible. 
It might have not been done in our families, oh God, but we're going to be the first. We're going to break every curse, oh God, and we're going to bless our families. We're going to be the lenders and not the bows. We're going to be above and never beneath. We're going to be everything that you have called us to be. And kind Father, we just thank you because the devil is mad because he did not allow us to drown. The devil wanted us to drown, but you did not allow us to drown. But oh God, we're standing on our feet declaring in this atmosphere that you are good and your mercy endures forever and to all generations. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God, we give you praise. What didn't work last time is going to work this time. Write the vision and make it plain. And I promise you, it will manifest. And you will see it. Because my faith is increased. And my faith is active. And we're decreeing and declaring that all is well. Hallelujah. All is well. All is well. All is well. All is well. Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. Now this is about to be crazy. But I want you to give God praise for the things that did not work. Because things are about to turn and work in your favor. tragedy to have people that you know in your circles, in your families, suffering all because they don't know who to call. And for some of you, you've been the only Jesus they know. But I don't want to take this atmosphere for granted. If you aren't saved, if you need to say the sinner's prayer all over again, 
our elders, our ministers are here to be with you. But I don't want to take it for granted. And maybe you are saved, but you don't have a church home. The only way you're going to make it through this life, they don't talk about it much out in the world, but you need a church. Because here's where you get your strength for not just for Sunday mornings, but Monday through Saturday. So you need a church home. I've been here for 15 years, and these pastors are great. They don't talk about their people. They're not in no mess. They're not on social media talking about subliminal messages. They are walking with integrity. And you need a church that has integrity. Forget about what you see. And know that this is the place. wait for you because your faith I said it not only would it have you speak but in atmospheres like this yeah, have you step you'll say excuse me neighbor but I need this right now even if you're the only one stepping out so we thank you thank you ministers thank you elders we have done what we are called to do. We give you praise. And even if you don't want to walk up to the front, you can go to our website and join our church. You can see one of us after service. There are many ways you can join. You Maybe walking out to your front is too much and intimidating. But you need a church home. Somebody that can help guide you through this thing called life. Because I said in my message, storms are always going to come. But it's all about how you handle the storm. And I want you to walk away with this reminder. You will not drown. Hallelujah. We have done everything God has called us to be. All right. I believe that's any, any reiterations. Meet us here on Wednesday night for Bible study. Overseers in an awesome, in an awful, an awesome series called Layovers. Dial in on Strength in the Morning, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Purchase your prayer breakfast tickets. Reach out to a brother and sister later on this evening just to check on them and make sure that they okay because we all have storms. But we're going to make it through together. <laughs> so with all hearts, minds are clear, we're leaving as we pronounce a benediction over you. Kind Father, we just thank you that we're able to step out and that we're able to speak. We thank you for the measure of faith that we have because we will move mountains and we will see everything that you designed us to be. In spite of a storm, we will walk with our head held high. God, bless my brothers and sisters, oh God. God, meet them, oh God, where they are.